What you just saw was a relay that closed and opened its contacts and through which the maximum allowed current flowed. And since no contacts closed perfectly without a bit of bouncing around, you got yourself some sparks. Oh boy. Now I think everyone can guess that those sparks are not good for the relay. And yes, they do not only destroy the contact material, but sooner or later they will weld them together so that the contacts cannot open anymore when unpowering the relay. And only a well-placed smack can separate them once again. This occurrence is called relay sticking. And I hate it because the relay, which I've been using as a test subject here, is actually from a wireless socket that I've been using for a while. Such sockets are great for properly disconnecting your appliances from the grids and thus getting rid of the standby power. But so far in my life I tried three different wireless socket sets, which all eventually failed due to this relay sticking. That means it is finally time for me to come up with a solution, which yes, does exist. And while I was already tinkering with wireless sockets, I thought why not create the ultimate smart outlets that comes with tons of modifications and extra features. So in this episode of DIY or Buy, let's do exactly that in order to find out whether I should simply accept the faults of the commercial version or switch over to a DIY solution. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by the Altium Designer Software and JLC PCB. They are a wonderful combination when it comes to designing your custom PCB and then actually ordering them. But more about them later during the video. First off, why don't we have a closer look at the BiSocket Relay and its datasheet. Maybe we can find something suspicious. But no, it only tells us nicely all the juicy current and voltage details without offering a clue why the sticking occurs. So I had to investigate on my own, by simply adding a low resistance current shunt in series to the main current path, in order to properly measure how much current was actually flowing. And as you can see, we got a short current peak here with a value of 13.3 volts, which converted into amps is around 53.2 amps. This is way above the maximum current rating of the relay, and is definitely the reason why the sparks are so powerful that they can easily weld the contacts together. Now you might be saying though, this current peak only occurred because I shorted a lab bench power supply with tons of capacitors on its outputs. And yes, that is partly true. But when using the relay for AC appliances, then you can get a similar short current peak as well because all your connected appliances also want to quickly charge up their internal capacitors. So what we need to solve this problem is a relay that can handle a big inrush current. And that is exactly what I searched for next on the internet. And I quickly found out that the contact material plays a major role here. In the case of the bisocket relay, it is a silver alloy, which is common for general application relays. But what we want is either silver tin oxide or silver cadmium oxide as the material, because they are more resistant to the welding at high current peaks. So I searched for a while on Mauser to find a suitable relay, and I think this one should do the trick. It comes with the desired silver tin oxide, features a rated switching current of 30 amps, and a relay voltage of 5 volts as possible. So needless to say, I got myself some of them and immediately opened one up to repeat the same experiment as before. Now as expected, the arcs were still present, but way less noticeable. And during my testing session, I never got the relay to stick. The contacts of course also suffered a bit, but way less than the other relay. And that basically means that such a relay can be a solution to the sticking problem. And what bothers me the most here is that the high inrush current relay only costs 2 euro more than the general purpose one. Meaning that if they would use such relays from the start, they could extend the lifetime of their products and thus produce less electronics waste. But of course, that would also reduce their profits. 
But anyway, at this point we could simply replace the relay and the buy sockets and be done here. But since that would not be a very safe electronics job, I instead decided to make my own smart sockets. To improve it even further, I firstly wanted to get away from the capacitive dropper power supply the old socket featured and instead utilize such a small enclosed 5V power supply. Also I wanted to add an ESP8266 with Wi-Fi capability to the system, to not only easily reprogram it, but also to make it compatible with my home assistant system, about which you can learn all about in one of my previous videos. Last but not least, I wanted to include a power measurement IC that measures the AC voltage and current and then calculates the real power I'm currently using. So my initial goals were set for me, and I think not half bad, but getting it all to work in the end was not that easy. To start off though, I searched for a suitable power measurement IC and found this CS5460A1, which is not only supported by Home Assistant, but also comes as a breakout board. So after receiving one, I positioned it on the breadboard along with an ESP and connected them according to this schematic so that they can talk to one another through SPI. That was pretty simple to do, but what was a bit more complicated was how to measure the AC voltage and current. There's of course the same potential methods, by using a voltage divider for the voltage and a current shunt for the current. But this method is obviously not that safe, because you could more easily get shocked. To avoid that, I instead went with a voltage transformer and current transformer approach, which are galvanically isolated to the mains voltage, making them more safe. But what I didn't like was the big size of the voltage transformer, as well as its distortions it was adding to the lowered mains voltage. So I searched for an alternative for that and discovered this super small transformer, which by attaching suitable resistors to its input and output side, like its datasheet recommends it, can easily produce a suitable lower mains voltage for the IC. The current transformer by the way was even simpler to use, by only hooking up one resistor to it, across which we can then measure the lowered AC current flowing through the wire. Now at this point I also added a rather complicated resistor and capacitor network to the voltage and current input of the IC, like the datasheet recommends it, to prevent value surges as well as getting rid of unwanted frequencies. With this step complete, all that was left to do was programming the ESP through home assistance, and then fine adjusting the voltage and current gain values in the code by simply comparing what values a Qi power meter spits out and what the ESP spits out. And just like that, the power measuring functionality seems to work. But at this point, I kind of have to warn you that we're dealing with mains voltage here. So if you want to replicate this project, then it is at your own risk. But anyway, next I actually didn't test the relay functionality as well as the 5 volt power supply with the ESP because the complementary components and circuits were so simple and straightforward that I simply skipped them and instead directly jumped into the Altium Designer software to create the schematic. I recently found out about its library loader add-on, which makes it even simpler than before to find the right components for your projects. Because of that, creating the schematic was done in a breeze. And the only components here I haven't mentioned before are a 3.3V regulator to power the ESP and power IC, and two push buttons and a couple of resistors to later let the ESP enter programming mode, so that I can obviously program it. And with the schematic completed, I used the software to create a PCB design, whose outline needed to be as wide as the BI sockets but a bit longer due to more components. The reason why I use the same whiteness is that I wanted to reuse the actual socket part of the BI version, because that is something I cannot make on my own. And after around 4 hours of working on the PCB design, I was pretty happy with it. Even the 3D model looked promising, which is why I continued by uploading my Gerber files to JLC PCB 
who offered me a fantastic price for the PCBs. And while I was at it, I also ordered a stencil for the solder paste. After a week, my PCBs and stencil arrived. And since its quality was like always pretty flawless, I was very excited to giving it all a try. But long story short, I did make some design mistakes with those first PCBs. Not only was the footprint of the transformer incorrect, I also messed up the orientation for the choke and worst of all wired up the SPI pins of the power IC to the wrong pins of the ESP, because I apparently couldn't resist wiring up to the SPI terms. In the end though, I got my prototype to work when it comes to the relay switching and partly the power measurement. So I fixed those mentioned errors in the schematic and PCB design and got myself another round of PCBs. And after once again soldering all the SMD and THT components in place and uploading the final codes, it seems like the relay still worked fine as well as this time also the complete power measurement. And that meant for the final touch, I designed an enclosure for my sockets, 3D printed it, secured the PCB with screws in there, mounted the socket with hot glue, soldered on all the wires and finally closed it all up. And just like that, I made my own improved smart sockets that will hopefully last for a whole lot longer. And to answer my DIY or bike question, I made this little chart comparing both solutions. And for me, DIY is the clear winner here. But then again, I cannot tell you for sure how much better more pricey smart sockets would perform. With that being said, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, then consider supporting me through Patreon. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!